How's it going Star Seekers? My name's Got Cake, and in this review we're going to be taking a look at a game called City Driving Simulator. Now as you might have guessed it's a driving simulator where you get behind the wheel of an assortment of vehicles and have to complete missions to earn money whilst avoiding pedestrians, other road users and every other object in the surrounding environment. Now the developer Boombit Games have a back catalogue consisting of free to play mobile games and they released another game called Car Driving School Simulator for Android and iOS. I have a strong suspicion that City Driving Simulator was set to be a sequel to that game but somehow made the jump to Switch and evidence to support this will be presented shortly. So after a short loading screen we hit what is considered to be the main menu. There's no music in the game so it's definitely silent and as is the case with most mobile games we have an icon in the top left for the options menu. Opening the options we see it contains a single toggle called sound which turns the game's sound effects on and off. So back to the main menu where we can use the arrows to navigate through the available vehicle types but only the first is unlocked. We need to earn currency through completing missions to buy and unlock the rest and vehicles increase in price the further along you get. The two counters at the top of the screen show how many of the game's 50 missions were completed and how much gold we currently have. Now if we try selecting free roam with our unlocked car we're informed that we need to unlock the luxurious sedan to play it. So instead we hit drive to head into our first missions with the red horse muscle car. Here we can see we have 5 missions each rewarding different sums of gold and this goes for every vehicle in the game with more gold rewarded for completing later missions. As we begin our first red horse mission we're given a brief tutorial. Here we get to select between either button or accelerometer steering, whether we prefer left hand or right hand driving and our steering sensitivity. We then brief that when parking we have to stop in the marked area and that missions are based on speed and performance. We're also ranked with either gold, silver or bronze awards with gold rankings earning more money. So as we start the mission we see some giant control buttons that are plastered across the screen which we can't hide. These were clearly designed with mobile phone touchscreens in mind and they mimic the ones found in Boombit's other driving simulator game. This game's also touchscreen enabled on the Switch but god knows why you'd want to use it over the Joy-Con controls. So these first 5 missions are basically a tutorial. As we get started we're directed to drive forward and we follow the green markers on the floor and after a short drive we reach our first parking spot and stop in it to complete the mission. After receiving receiving our rank and reward, we can then select continue to move on to the next mission. Playing through the rest of the missions we get to drive in on the city roads and we're introduced to a few new game mechanics. These include barriers which raise when we stop at them, gas stations where we need to refuel our vehicle which first involves stopping in the marked area. A fuel gauge then appears at the bottom of the screen and we can tap A to quickly fill the car before proceeding. After messing up on this turn I also learned how to reverse. First you have to hit the Y button to switch into reverse before accelerating backwards and then hit the X button to switch back to drive. We're also taught about reverse parking at the end of this mission with reverse icons on the signs and floor indicating this and these become a common appearance. Finally we learn that hitting anything at all will stop you dead including pedestrians. Here for example this pedestrian walks out into the road and unfortunately running him down doesn't splatter him and instead he appears to be made of granite. He then just stands there staring into space with his pathetic chin beard and flat cap as his drug dealer mate lurks nearby. So after swerving that twat at the beginning I continued on through the level taking roundabouts like I was pissed up and totally screwing up navigating through this tight entryway before finally parking up in the driveway of my idyllic suburban home. Hitting continue after completing this mission started me on the first coach level automatically unlocking the vehicle for me. Now I also had enough money to unlock the guardian vehicle at this point meaning that you don't have to complete every mission to earn enough gold to unlock the next vehicle. So bus missions in the game are a little different. After stopping for a few seconds in this first zone you then have a set time period to reach the next checkpoint. A timer in the top left shows how much time is remaining and if you reach a checkpoint early you have to wait for it to run down. If you manage to hit all checkpoints in time you'll earn a gold medal but screwing up and arriving later even one of them will drop your rank into silver. The coach accelerates and handles different to the car and you need to get used to its size when turning corners. Moving on to our next vehicle, an off-road truck called the Guardian, its missions involve you driving over uneven terrain such as ramps and navigating through tight winding sections which is tediously slow and boring. The Guardian's fifth mission is by far the best where you have to work your way up these storage containers and I've no idea why all the Guardian missions didn't feature this kind of gameplay. I also learned about the stuck feature in this mission which activates if you accelerate for a few seconds after getting stuck which makes the game rewind setting both your position and timer back about 10 seconds but this doesn't work if you don't try and activate it straight away. 
So taking a look next at two of the game's delivery vehicles, one of which is called Delivery West, and the other simply titled Delivery Big, both sets of missions feature similar gameplay, with the only difference being the size of the vehicles. These missions usually involve you travelling to somewhere to pick up materials, which you then need to transport to other locations on the map. Now I actually found these missions to be the most interesting ones in the game, and you often needed to reverse the large vehicles into places to drop off your goods. So after earning enough money to unlock the luxurious sedan, I decided to give the game's free roam mode a go. I selected Delivery West, but when the level loaded, I found myself behind the wheels of the sedan. Confused, I quit out and instead selected the intercity bus. Again, I loaded up the sedan. So it appears you can't play a free roam mode in anything but the sedan, which in my mind instantly turned the game from being mediocre to just plain shite. In free roam mode you have no timer or durability and can open the map which shows green markers. After heading to one of these markers you'll find a parking zone and stopping in it activates a red marker on the map. You can then travel to the red marker and park up in the zone there to earn a few coins. Now the sedan's actual missions just feature more basic driving challenges and after earning enough money I unlock the spot sports car. Now I found the sports car missions to be the worst of the bunch. The car accelerates fast and its handling is much more sensitive, but its durability is absolute dog shit. The first mission sees you trying to navigate through a tight winding course, and the tiniest of bumps chip away at your durability bar seen in the top left, and when this bar runs out, you fail the mission. The sports car's second mission is also a little odd, as it's more of a race. You get these big flashing arrows and red X's directing you through the city, and when you touch the final green zone, the race ends instantly. So following my attempts at the sports car's missions, I found my interest in the game waning, and I really couldn't be asked to unlock and test the final three vehicles. So instead I'll just summarise my opinions and gameplay experience with City Driving Simulator. To begin with, I'll say that the game simply feels like a cheap mobile port which is basically unfinished. Despite the visuals not being great, I experienced plenty of frame rate issues, and a lot of popping from environmental objects, vehicles and pedestrians. Those big ass mobile phone buttons plastered all over the screen were also just an eyesore. Now the variety of vehicles is decent, but missions take part on the same small map and end up feeling pretty samey. They generally fall into three categories depending on whether you're behind the wheel of a car, bus or delivery vehicle, and free roam mode may as well have been left out of the game considering how limited it is. Finally, one major bug I've yet to mention is with the game steering. If you stay between left and right too quickly, your wheels just lock up, meaning you can't turn anymore and usually end up driving straight into a wall. And this occurs regularly when you're making micro adjustments to your driving line. So now we come to rating the game. Now I rate games between 1 and 5 stars, with a shovelware stamp of approval reserved for the worst games on the eShop. This rating is based on my own personal opinion on what a game has to offer in terms of gameplay and value for money to potential buyers. And for a rating I'd give City Driving Simulator 1 out of 5 stars. It's clear that the game was destined for the mobile app stores with its mobile centric interface and low quality visuals and while you can complete missions and unlock all 10 vehicles, the lack of a real free roam mode means you can't actually drive them outside of the missions and you really aren't getting a lot for your money with this one. So you can get the game from the UK Switch eStore currently with 25% off for £8.9 p, or from the US eStore for $8.99 or alternatively you could just save your money and buy something decent. And that's it for this review of City Driving Simulator. Hit that like button if this review helped you out and let me know your thoughts on it in the comments section below. And as always, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to be notified of future Switch indie game reviews. For now though, I just want to thank you all once again for watching and until next time, game on.